I knew nothing really about professional culinary, mm-hmm. right? I mean, I'm an engineer by training background. The closest I've seen food operation is like my wife's uncle owned a Chinese restaurant, right? And I was like, I don't want to do that. That's no. crazy. Um, so restaurants destroy food. So yeah, and then Having I grew up in the restaurant business. I I, I happened to have a neighbor yeah. uh, who was a former personal chef. Ah. He used to go into people's home, cook a bunch sure. of meals for them, put in the fridge. Yeah, you put them in containers, you That's date right. them, you have single-serving them, serving label meals. them, and yeah. their I've clients would come home yeah. and enjoy the meals, right, yeah. uh, at their convenience. Uh, so, so I took that concept, and I was like, okay, here's how you can make uh, great quality food mm. through chefs like the neighbor. Mm. Now, how do you m- bring the convenience to people right. by delivering it? Got is it. our conclusion on how to do so. So here it is. I'll just show people on my screen for a quick second. For those of you who aren't looking, you have a nigiri sushi sampler here. You have uh, a nice corn poblano. Uh, yeah, roast sour- chicken pesto. Beautiful dishes. Um, um, now these come to you. How? How do these arrive at yeah. your door? We package them into these uh, single serving container. Mm-hmm. And uh, the food is cooked, but it's chilled. Mm. Not frozen. Okay. Chill, Chill as if you put in the fridge. We yeah. do it better than that, obviously, but it's as if you put in the fridge. And there are very simple instructions for them to heat up the food uh, using whether the oven hmm. or if they're really short on time, the microwave, uh, and get it to be exactly what the chef has designed that dish to do. The chef, our chef designed every dish to be appropriate for this format. Obviously, if you order sushi or uh, green salads, there's no heating involved. Those right, are you're ready good. To go. You're good to go. Except um, for the rice on the sushi is going to oh, be we, a little we bit actually, harder. We actually figured out a, a great way to do that well. You did? You'd be amazed. What is the uh, way to make sushi rice? like a Different kind of rice that would fit better for that format, for ah, example. Ah, got it. Okay, yeah. great. So, um, uh, so the, the format allows us to have a great variety on the menu. You can see 12, 15 entree choices mm-hmm. on any given day. And we have a daily changing menu mm-hmm. where on any given day, every day from one day to the next, there can be four or five new items on the menu. Um, at the same time, this chill format, not just variety, allow us to serve um, entrees, but appetizer, mm-hmm. uh, side dishes, dessert kits, meals, beverages, allow us to do a lot of other options. You have to pick a window in which it's going to be delivered as well, right? So we have a different uh, set of delivery uh, options for customer. Yeah. In proper San Francisco here, you can get it on so-called on-demand. Right. So you can open the app at 6.30, I'm hungry, tap, tap, and 20 minutes later, we show up your door. But if you live in, let's say, um, San Jose or Walnut Creek or Mm -hmm. Marin, you do have to order a couple hours in advance, and you do choose these hourly window that we would deliver it in. Mm. Uh, So that's our uh, mechanism to serve as many people as possible. Uh, so, and if you pick a middle point of the bay, we serve a 40 mile radius. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's incredible. Uh, our mission is to make real food accessible to everyone everywhere. And that's our way to accomplish that. Now, is this a technology business? It's funded by venture capitalists. And what I've always heard about the food business is like, this is not a venture business. This is not a technology business, but yet you went to MIT but you have no experience in food, as you said, you had to learn it yourself. So you come as a novice without any endemic experience. Mm -hmm. So there's really two questions there is, is this a venture business? And then two, is it an asset to come at it without all the prior experience or is it a liability? What have you learned? Take them in either order you like. I feel like um, we, as we, we do have people on the team who are, very experienced with culinary work. So, sure. So, you know, I think just my own shortcoming on not having that experience in the past is no longer a factor because right. we now have people who are really Is it talented. an asset though with your fresh eyes looking at the but product? But the fresh is- eyes and, and trying to mm, find a new ways for people to eat better and, mm-hmm. and people far and far away, not just proper San Francisco. If we only serve proper San Francisco, we are really restricting ourselves mm-hmm. uh, because people eat everywhere. Yeah. Um, and it would be a disservice if we cannot serve more than just proper urban environment. Right. Um, you got to get the infill. Uh, you gotta get that's the right. Sub- suburbs. 
to, and right now you're in the infill, right? Like yeah, we, area we just outside. And I, I, and I talk about just the Bay Area here, but we're also serving Seattle, Tacoma, yeah. Portland. I mean, I can go on and on, right? L.A., San Diego, New York, New Jersey, Washington D.C., and all the urban and suburban environment. Um, but taking going back to to your question about uh, having our fresh eyes, uh, I knew picking up food from local restaurants to deliver to you, which is a lot of companies do that. And I have sure, great Door appreciation. Dash yeah, Postmates. I mean, Postmates, I, have, everybody's doing I have a great appreciation for all these companies, by the way. It's just very different in that um, restaurants does what we call um, uh, subscale cooking, which is, let's say you walk into a restaurant and you order a filet of salmon with, you know, bok choy or rice sure. or something like that, let's say. Uh, you have a cook in the back kitchen would, with a little skillet who would cook up that single piece of salmon and serve it to you. Yeah. It's great. You sit in the dining room, they cook it, Perfect. they plate it up, they put it in front of you. Awesome. But if I asked that cook, can you make a thousand unit of that? Right. He would either keel over or he would rather just say, no way. I won't right. do it. So we approach cooking very differently mm. than what a restaurant does. And we do it at scale in a very efficient manner that... Uh, because these are chef-designed dishes for this specific purpose, uh, it brings great taste. Mm. But yet the consistency is actually higher than had an individual cook a thousand times of that over. Hey, everybody. Let me tell you about Braintree. Yes, Payments 101. You have a brilliant idea, but you need to turn it into a great product that people can't wait to buy. But... Now is the time to think about how you'll accept payments. You'll first need a payment gateway that collects your customers' payment data, and you have to make sure their funds are approved. Then you need to send those funds to a merchant account, and the merchant account is a temp holding tank for your money collected from online sales. Once it passes through your merchant account, it ends up in your bank account. Yes, there's multiple steps. It's not simple, but it becomes very simple when you use Braintree. Yes, Braintree is a payments platform that comes with a payment gateway and a merchant account. They make it super simple. All you have to do is add a couple of lines of code to your app, to your website, and it all works. You can make it work so simply by visiting braintreepayments.com slash twist, braintreepayments.com slash twist. It is the easiest way to add payments to any product or service. Many of the companies that have invested in use it, and every time a new product or service comes out, like Apple Pay or Bitcoin, whatever it is, the next payment service that we don't even know about or haven't considered, they will incorporate it, and they do it usually before that service even launches or while it's launching. So you just wind up getting this incredible um, you know, wind in your sails, basically, by using Braintree. I see it happen on all my startups. They save weeks, if not months, of coding and pain and suffering by just using Braintree for their payments. Go ahead and visit braintreepayments.com slash twist. And a personal thank you for me to Braintree for making such a great product that all my startups I invest in use. It's just a great product. Okay, and it's simple. All right, let's get back to this amazing episode. <laughs> 